Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello. What do I like to do on Sunday afternoons? On Sunday afternoons, I like to go for a walk in the countryside. Ahí fuera en el campo, fuera de la ciudad. Far from the maddening crowd. On Sunday afternoons, I like to go for a walk. To go for a walk. To go for a walk is dar un paseo. Ir de paseo. Andando, eh? No de paseo en coche. Eso sería to go for a drive. Example. On Sunday afternoons, I like to go for a walk in the countryside. In the countryside. In the city, no. But on Saturday afternoons, I like to go for a drive. Not for a walk. I like to go for a drive in the countryside as well, también. So, on Saturday afternoons, I like to go for a drive in the countryside. And on Sunday afternoons, I like to go for a walk, paseando, to go for a walk. To go for a drive, to go for a walk in the countryside. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase 111. Ahora vamos a ver la frase. On Sunday afternoons, we like to go for a walk in the countryside. Los domingos, por la tarde, nos gusta dar un paseo por el campo. Y ahora nos fijaremos en la primera parte de la frase. On Sunday afternoons. Bien, sabemos que decimos la, con la preposición in para afternoon, tarde. In the afternoon. Pero aquí, como hay un día de la semana, Sunday, domingo, tenemos que decir on, la preposición on Sunday afternoon. Entonces, on Sunday, y no Sunday, sa, casi como una A, Sunday afternoon, y no afternoon, afternoon. Hay tres cosas que recordar, on Sunday afternoon. Muy bien, veamos más ejemplos con Sunday afternoon. My grandmother goes to church every Sunday afternoon. Mi abuela va a misa o a la iglesia cada domingo por la tarde. Y... What do you do on Sunday afternoons? ¿Qué haces tú los domingos por la tarde? Sunday afternoon. Her K demonios es esto. What the hell is this? Flamenco classes. The Sundays afternoons. No me lo puedo creer. Quieren decir los domingos por la tarde? <sighs> Pues entonces, no es the, es on. On Sunday afternoons. Y no es Sundays, no, es singular. Es on Sunday afternoons. Por favor, dilo conmigo. On Sunday afternoons. Hmm, una vez más. On Sunday afternoons. Good. Pues, can I go to flamenco classes on Sunday afternoons? <sighs> no sé. Primero, tengo que cambiar esto, eh? A ver, no es the, es on. Y no es Sundays, es Sunday. Claro, decimos on Sunday afternoons. On Sunday afternoons. Ahora a por la segunda parte de la frase. We like to go. Sí, otra vez este verbo to like. We like to go. Esta vez está seguido por el infinitivo. We like to go. Se puede decir we like going, pero nunca we like to going. Se puede usar o el infinitivo o el gerundio. We like going o we like to go. Entonces veamos más ejemplos con we like to go. We like to go to the cinema once a week. Nos gusta ir al cine una vez a la semana. I like to go to bed early. A mí me gusta ir a la cama temprano. We like to go to bed early. Nosotros nos gusta acostarnos pronto. To go to bed early. Entonces, we like to go. O we like going. Y ahora vamos a ver la palabra del día, que es 
speedboat, lancha motora. Mi vecino tiene una lancha motora. My neighbor has a speedboat. We like going on speedboats. Nos gusta usar las lanchas motoras. <laughs> Me dicen que si tenemos hobbies. Hobbies, mis amigas y yo. Pero si estamos ocupadísimas. Mira. Los lunes por la tarde nos gusta ir a tomar café. ¿Mm? We like to go, nos gusta ir. We like to go for a coffee. Okay? On Tuesday afternoon, we like to go for a cocktail. Mm -hmm. We like to go for a cocktail. ¿Has visto como digo, nos gusta ir? Hmm. We like to go, we like to go. Dilo tú. Eso, we like to go, we like to go. Me encanta. ¿Qué más? El miércoles por la tarde nos gusta ir a la sauna, para relajarnos un poquito. Huh? We like to go to the sauna. Okay? On Thursday afternoon, we like to go abroad. Mm -hmm. We like to go abroad. Así somos. El viernes por la tarde nos gusta ir al cine. Hmm? We like to go to the cinema. El sábado por la tarde, on Saturday afternoon, we like to go for lunch to a nice restaurant. Huh? We like to go for lunch. Y el sábado Mm, perdona, el domingo por la tarde nos gusta ir a estudiar inglés. Mm -hmm. On Sunday afternoon, we like to go and study English. ¿A ti también? Hmm, I can't believe it. Pero es verdad. On Sunday afternoon, we like to go and study English. Ahora vamos a ver la última parte de la frase. For a walk in the countryside, dar un paseo por el campo. Si estamos hablando en inglés de dar un paseo, lo podemos hacer de tres maneras. To go for a walk, como en esta estructura, to have a walk, o to take a walk. Pero aquí sí estamos mirando go for, no olvidas la preposición, to go for a walk. For a walk in, en, in, the countryside. No decimos for the countryside. Eso sería una traducción literal. To go for a walk in the countryside. No decimos countryside. Hay que decirlo casi como una A. Countryside. In the countryside. Muy bien. Veamos ejemplos con countryside. On Saturday morning, we go for a walk in the countryside. Los sábados por la mañana, damos un paseo por el campo. In the Countryside. Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a ver la frase entera. On Sunday afternoons, y no digas in Sunday afternoons, on Sunday afternoons, we like to go, or we like going for, la preposición muy importante, for a walk in the countryside. Muy bien. Hi, it's Mr. Strong, and say hello to these. Oh, and say hello to these, my legs. Yeah, you can't see them, but I've got strong legs. Ah, yeah, I have strong legs. Oh, well, how? I'll tell you. Yeah, well, I, I go for walks. Yeah, I run, but I go for walks every day. In fact, I go for a walk on Sundays. I go for a walk on Mondays. I, I go for walks every day. Yeah, well, I like the exercise and I like <sighs> the fresh air. Yeah, well, that's why my legs are so strong. <laughs> yeah, to go for a walk. Dar un paseo. To go for a walk. Do you like to go for a walk? I'm sure on the weekends you like to go for walks, right? Cuando es singular, un paseo decimos a walk. Si decimos en general, Doy paseos, I go for walks, yeah? So, do you go for a walk? I go for a walk. Cuidado con la pronunciación, no es walk, it's walk. La L no se pronuncia. So, I'm going to go for a walk now. Yeah, do you want to come? ¿Queréis venir? Let's go for a walk. It's true. Yes, it's true that sales fell. But come on, they didn't fall that much. Las ventas cayeron un 2,3% nada más. It's true, es verdad que han caído las ventas. It's true that, true, true. It's true that sales, or the sales, ambos nos paran aquí. It's true that sales, escrito sales, 
se pronuncia sales. It's sales. La primera letra en el alfabeto es A. Sales. It's true that sales fell. Yeah. Pero tanto no, no era para tanto. But they didn't fall, they didn't fall, they didn't fall that much. So much también nos vale. Pero mejor that. It's true that sales fell. Yeah. But they didn't fall that much. It's true that sales fell. Hombre. But tanto no. But they didn't fall that much. They didn't fall that much. <laughs> Okay, welcome to class number 111, uno, uno, uno. 11 is my lucky number, so it's going to be a special class. The sentence, it's true that sales fell, but they didn't fall that much. Es verdad que las ventas cayeron, pero no cayeron tanto. So the expression, to be true, ser verdad. It's true, es verdad. Now, ojo, la pronunciación, T-R, T-R, it sounds like ch. Ch, como CH más R. So, for example, árbol, tree. Good, muy bien. Not tree. Tree is typical Spanish. So, I repeat, tree, tree. It's true. Okay, so it's true. Es verdad. For example, it's true that they were here. Es verdad que estuvieron aquí. Did Spain win the World Cup? Yes, it's true. Right? Sí, es verdad. España ganó la Copa Mundial. Um, it's true that she's a doctor. Es verdad que ella es médico. It's true that he's married. Es verdad que él está casado. So repeat, it's true. Es verdad. And the pronunciation de R, ch, ch, true. It's true. You know, it's true I agreed to marry my husband. And, well, it's true that I said yes when he asked me. <laughs> obviously. And it's true that he's not a bad husband. But you know, last week, he forgot to buy me a present. Uh -huh. oh, I mean, it's true that it wasn't my birthday. And it's true that it wasn't our anniversary. But still, everybody likes a present. Eso, para es verdad, decimos it's true, y no it's truth. Repeat with me, it's true. Perfect. One more time. It's true. Good. I mean, I suppose he's not a bad husband. It's true that he never complains, and it's true that sometimes I forget to wash his clothes, and it's true that I never iron his clothes, and it's true that I have no idea what he does in work all day. <laughs> and it's true that he paid for dinner last night, and it's true that he took me away on holiday last year. <laughs> it's true that I do love him. <laughs> I suppose he is a good husband. And it is true. It's true that I love him. More than Frank, of course. No, it's true. It's true. I love my husband. <laughs> okay, let's continue with our lesson. The sentence was, it's true that sales fell, but they didn't fall that much. Es verdad que las ventas cayeron, pero no cayeron tanto. So here we're going to look at another irregular verb in past simple. Otro verbo irregular en pasado simple. The verb to fall, caer. So repeat, the verb to fall, caer. In past simple, in past simple is fell, fell. Ojo, no es felt, felt. Porque a lot of times I hear felt, felt. Pero felt is a past simple del verbo to feel, sentirse. Aquí es caer, to fall. Pasado, fell. So, sales fell. Las ventas cayeron. Another example, the book fell on the floor. El libro cayó al suelo. More examples, the cake fell on the table. La tarta cayó a la mesa. The bottle fell on my foot. La botella se cayó, cayó a mi pie. And the word of the day, la palabra del día, is expenses, gastos. Repeat, expenses, gastos. So, remember, the verb to fall, irregular past, fell. Wow, look at these numbers. Thanks to my team and I, well, uh, crime 
is falling. In fact, crime fell dramatically in the last few months. Yeah, it fell, right? Caerse, or caer, to fall in presente. Okay, vamos a repasarlo. Tenemos fall, fell, fallen. So, every year, crime falls. Last year, crime fell, fell. And lately, crime has fallen. Pero no te preocupes todavía con esa. Fell. Pero luego la gente se lía con feel, que es feel, felt, felt. Cuidado. Esta no es feel, es fall. Y el pasado sería fell. So let's take a look. Crime fell. Absolutely. Violence. Violence fell too. Robberies. Robberies fell too. I mean, all kinds of crime fell in the shopping center. So that means we're doing a good job. Sí, lo estamos haciendo muy bien. Yeah, crime fell. And we hope nobody falls. Yeah, esperemos que no caiga nadie. Solo el crimen. We hope only crime falls. Okay? <laughs> Okay, you're doing a great job. Let's finish our class for today. It's true that sales fell, but they didn't fall that much. Es verdad que las ventas cayeron, pero no cayeron tanto. So, we're looking at the expression that much, tanto. Now, ojo, normally, um, tanto significa so much, so much. But aquí we have a negative, negative. Entonces, se convierte en, it becomes that much. Okay, ojo. For example, they didn't fall that much. No, they didn't fall so much, okay? Because we have a negative sentence. So, no cayeron tanto. They didn't fall that much. I didn't eat that much. Yo no comí tanto. He didn't study that much. En no estudió tanto. He didn't cry that much. He didn't run that much. Again, so I said tanto because we have a negative sentence, we use that much, you know, so much. Si fuera afirmativo, sí. I ate so much. Yo comí tanto. Ahí sí, I ate so much. But here, we're saying that much. It's true that sales fell, but they didn't fall that much. Okay, keep practicing. We'll see you in the next class. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting painting. I'll tell you that right now. You see... I'm using a lot of colors, but not that much. With each color, not that much. Just a little, you see. Green. A little green, but not that much. That's right. Not that much. Not that much. Just a little bit. Not that much. Not that much. How about some red? Not that much, though. Conservative with the colors. That's my style on this painting. Some blue. Huh. Very nice. A little blue, but not that much. Some green. Hmm. Some green looks very nice, but not that much. Just a little bit of green. A little yellow. Not that much. Green. Not that much. Blue. Not that much. What does it need? Oh, black. It needs black but not that much. How long did they say they'd come to visit us? How long did they, how long ago did they say they'd come to visit us? We're still waiting. You know, it must be a year. It must, it must be a year ago that they told us they would come to visit us and they haven't visited us yet. We're still waiting. My good friend, Charlie, he told me, well, he and his wife, Charlie and, and uh, Charlene, they told us they'd come, they'd come, they would. Yo hago la contracción, they'd, no tenéis que hacerlo. Pero si los nativos si lo hacemos. Uh, they told me they'd come to visit us, but that must be a year ago. It must be a year ago that they told me that, my God. And they still haven't come. Yeah, they told me, I can't remember when they told me they'd come to visit us. And I'm st we're still waiting. We'll, we're still waiting for their visit. It must be a year now. It must be. Debe ser ya un año que ha pasado desde que 
Nos lo dijeron. It must be a year now. Hmm. How long ago? How long ago? Yeah, how long ago did they say they'd come to visit? <laughs> it must be a year ago now. It must be a year ago now. It must be a year ago now. How long ago, how long ago, how long ago did they say they'd come to visit? It must be a year ago now. A veces es difícil entender el inglés, así. How long ago did they say, ellos? ¿Hace cuánto que dijeron que iban a ver, o que vendrían a visitar? Escuchad. How long ago did they say they'd come? Contraction, contraction of they would come. How long ago did they say they would come to visit? It must be a year ago now. Ahora ya un año desde que recuerdo que dijeron algo al, al respecto. How long ago did they say they'd come? How long ago? How long ago? La expresión, hace cuánto que? How long ago? 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 How long ago did they say? Un poco de fonética. How long ago did they say they'd come to visit? Hmm, it must be a year ago now. How long ago? A year ago. Ole! It's a great day here in Spain, and I'm practicing some Spanish trivia here in the local newspaper. Let's see. How long ago did Spain win the World Cup? <laughs> well, um, I know a lot about Spain. I mean, most of these are easy. How long ago did Spain win the World Cup? Do you understand that question? How long ago? How long ago, we say. How long ago did Spain win the World Cup? Ask me that question. That's right. How long ago did Spain win the World Cup? Hmm. Let's try another one. How long ago did Spain win the Euro Cup? How long ago did Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castilla get married? Hmm. Some of these are a bit difficult. How long ago did Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castilla get married? Uh, I'm going to try another question. How long ago did they say they'd come to visit? Oh, it must be a year ago now. How long did they say they'd come to visit? They'd come to visit. They'd come. They. 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 They'd. Cuando decimos rápido es complicado a veces. How long ago? Hace cuánto que dijeron que iban a venir a visitar o que vendrían. Literalmente en este caso. Hace cuánto que dijeron que vendrían a visitarnos. How long ago did they say they'd come? How long ago did they say they'd come? How long ago did they say that, que es opcional, they'd come, they would come to visit? Yes, they'd, difficult to pronounce. How long ago did they say they'd come to visit? Oh, it must be a year ago now. And the word of the day, la palabra del día, overcast. Overcast, todo junto. Overcast, como suena. Que es cuando cielo tapado de nubes, cubierto entero, de horizonte a horizonte, no ves el azul del cielo. No es nuboso ni nublado, eso es cloudy. Pero se ve, yeah. se ve un poco de, de sol o un poco de azul. Pero overcast, cielo gris, deprimente, ¿a que sí? Overcast. Whew. Hey, how's it going? I've just escaped from the shopping center. Whew. It was full of my fans trying to get an autograph. Honestly, but... As I didn't have time to speak to all of them and give them all an autograph, I gave them my work address and they said they'd come here to get an autograph. Honestly, it was full of them. How long ago did they say they'd come to get an autograph? It's been a while. Well, in the meantime, we can practice. I want you to say, how long ago did they say they'd come to get an autograph? Okay, good. They said they'd come before four, and it's quarter past four now. Well, they're probably all fighting to get in. They'll probably all come at once, and it will be crazy. 
You know, the staff in the shopping center said they'd been there for ages. They said my fans had been causing chaos. I mean, look, how long ago did they say they'd been there? Ah, uh, yeah, they said they'd been there overnight. <laughs> what? It's true. They were causing chaos. Now, how long ago did they say they'd come? <sighs> Again. How long ago did they say they'd come to visit? It must be a year ago now. Must. Must. Must is obligación moral. I must study more. Debo por todo medios encontrar la manera de estudiar más el inglés, por ejemplo. I must. Pero must también es conclusión lógica o, o una especie de must be. Puh, debe de ser. ¿Cuánto tiempo habrá? Hará un año por lo menos desde que la última vez que nos dijeron que nos venían a visitar. How long ago did they say they would come to visit? Hmm. I don't know. It must be a year ago now. Ya hará un año. Hará un año ya. Eso es el now al final. It must be a year ago now. Hmm. Yeah. At least a year. Al menos un año. Hace que no dicen ni mu. <laughs> yeah. How long ago did they say they, were, they would come to visit? How long ago? How long ago did they say they would, they'd, come to visit. Whew. It must be a year ago now. Ya hará un año. It must be. Si no, no lo explico. Debe de ser. It must be a year ago now. Yeah. They're not coming to visit, apparently. All right. Well, I'm still a little shaken up. Yeah, shaken up is un poco nervioso, molesto. I'm a little bit shaken up still because of the, uh, the pests. Yeah the mice, uh, and yeah, the cockroaches. Yeah, they're back. I know, they're disgusting. I don't like them. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, it must be a year since I last saw a cockroach here. More than a year. It must be more, maybe two years since I saw a cockroach or a mouse. But now, they're all back. Hmm. It must be that someone left some food out. Yeah, I think someone left some food out. It must be. Cuidado, no decimos it must to be. Nunca empleamos el to después del must. I must go. He must listen. It must be. Never, ever, ever with to. Yeah, nunca ponemos un to con must. Ni con should tampoco, eh, que lo he, lo he oído. So, it must be over a year since we had this problem. And now, all the pests have decided to come back. Ah, it must be an unlucky day. <sighs> Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en cursodeinglesonlinetve.com. Y por menos de un euro al día.